Everybody celebrates day and night. There's two things in particular that they like to do, and both of them is sing and dance and pitch a little woo. Before the band, my perception of the local music scene, and there was, you know, while I was in the band as an active participant, and then after that, I was a journalist, I guess you could say, uh, trying to, you know, promote music and document it. And, and yeah, so I was in uh, the Beef Masters. Well, you know, the big, the big one was the Beef Masters, obviously. Yeah. They were the first band that came along after us, I think, that we were like, oh. Watch these guys, because we're going to learn something from these guys. I think that was around 91, and they were talking about, you know, okay, so we got a drummer now. We just need to find someone who can be a singer. And uh, Matt was like, uh, Kendall can try it. And I was like, oh, never thought about it, but sure. And uh, Richard's like, D can you sing? And, you know, I don't really know. I and for the record, I can't. I'm, not, I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. But I was willing to make a fool of myself. It's like I can. I will be a spectacle if we need a spectacle. So it's fun to be a band, but you know, we, we wanted that extra hook, and uh, we really liked the butthole surfers. So we set up a kind of a film light show thing, and Pat and Casey started doing all that, and it got increasingly more extravagant and impressive. We we're trying to do, you know, play as much as we can to get uh, as much interest as we could so that we could you know, justify asking to play at Crossroads. Everyone talks about, you know, Steve Raybon played there a lot. Everyone, everyone saw him play there. I don't know how many people actually did, but you know, it's a grunge had come through and it killed hair metal and there's all this more alternative stuff in the top 40 or whatever. And so uh, I think Crossroads at the time sort of reflected that because you had lots of bands from all around Texas that would come through and play. Uh, Sprawl was good, I think. Buffon Jellyfish from Austin came through and played. I think Tin Hands. Bands like that that, that kind of it, it made us, when they came to town to play, it made it feel like, you know, oh, why can we can do that too, you know. So Houston was like our home base uh, as far as, you know, we, we knew more bands there. We, I think we played more shows there. It was easier to get in and out of. We turned down the opportunity to open for Candlebox. And it was a good opportunity and we probably should have done it, but we already had another show booked and we wanted to be professional and plus we really just didn't like Candlebox so much. So. By virtue of age, we were the first of a bunch of bands that played around that time. Uh, but, you know, we were lucky in that we had a lot of bars to play at, um, a lot of bands trying to, you know, play at those places. You know, one kind of makes the other go around. Uh, we got to bring a lot of bands to town. That was that was a lot of fun. We had a Brown Hornet, this is band from Austin. They're insane. Brought Bleach Bath, this band from Houston. We brought them to play with us. Uh, that was pretty much the end of it until we did the reunion thing a few years ago for, for Brad's birthday. every possible band at every possible venue in this town and the greatest show I think I've ever seen was uh, Junior Varsity and Brown Hornet playing on uh, Paul Murray's back porch. Well in Kendall we were playing Luke Perry and Kendall had a little teen beat picture of Luke Perry that he set on fire and it I mean it made it 130 on stage for like a minute. But it's cool it's so cool to see you know, flyers up and go, I don't know any of those bands, but there's a lot of them and I bet they're all having a really good time. I hope they are. So you know, it's cool to know that, that stuff that stuff carries on even though you stop paying attention to it. Close enough for an encore. <laughs>